This fuel rail is not looking so nice. But this fuel rail is very nice. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. We're out here with Toad for another Toad episode. We're gonna tackle the fuel rail in this video. More importantly, we're actually gonna get the injectors. So we got a fuel rail right here. This rusty piece of tubing is where the fuel comes out of and it gets dispersed amongst all these little injectors. Uh, let me show you what we got here. So the fuel comes out of this stainless line uh, from the fuel pump comes up into here this little fitting goes into this stain full <laughs> fuel rail this thing gets rusty over time this is actually not too bad I have seen ones that just break off right here working on this WJ here with a 4.0 straight six best engine ever made but I saw this little fuel line right here it looked a little wonky so I went to straighten it out and said uh oh oh my wow look at that rot <laughs> check your fuel lines guys but it's an ugly fuel rail uh, we really want to change the injectors these injectors get kind of cracked and old and you can see right there they tend to start splitting a little bit probably from the heat but we're gonna change the injectors from these one hole injectors to the four port injectors so let's go ahead and get this all apart all right guys this is what you do when you want to change your fuel rail and your fuel injectors start her up If you notice, the toad sounded a little more aggressive when I started it because I welded a Flowmaster 40 <laughs> exhaust up in there. It's uh, just a little muffler upgrade, you know what I'm saying? So while she's running, you open up the fuse box and you take out, where is it? You take out the fuel pump relay and this is gonna stop the fuel from going into the rail. This way when we open up the fuel system, we don't get fuel all over us. Lay this down here. Cover this up. And we wait for it to stall. Gonna listen to the growl of that Flowmaster while she stalls. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Still going. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer Bunny. Ah! Jackpot! Alright, to start this process, we are going to take off the terminals of the battery because we want the computer to reset itself. We want to make sure that when it learns the function of the new ported injectors, it's, uh, it's not calculating the fuel uh, release of a one port injector. We want to make sure it relearns itself. So we're gonna just zip tie the terminals together. Don't worry, it's okay. As long as they are disconnected from the battery, there's no juice in the system. And when we close the circuit of the Jeep, we'll ensure that everything has been dissipated. So, so there we go. We'll let this rest for the duration of the project. And again, just like the valve cover video, we're gonna disconnect everything on this side of the engine. I'm just gonna remove these vacuum lines right here. Let's see. They should come off nice and easy now that it's all new. Put these over here. Take off our cables. Throttle cable pops right out. Push that, pull that, send it back through, out of the way. Same thing with the kick down cable. Push and pull, rest that back there. And we want to take off this whole wire loom up here. We'll remove the temperature sensor for the water. And it's hard to see, well, this connector is broken. Let me show you guys. If you have the cats under here with the two O2 sensors and 2000 and 2001s, I should say some 2000s, 
You're gonna have O2 sensors here. They're attached by these little brackets and these things break, they're brittle, so that one popped right off. And there's one on this side too. Let's see if we can slide it off its perch. Push, pull, is it push or pull? Oh, look at that. Where'd it go? Huh, we lost it. Ooh, this one's a little wiggly. All right, well, that's out of the way. Good, very good. Let's proceed with these wires. I'm gonna gently try to slide this up off these head studs. Again, be careful, this is brittle. You can see the crack that was uh, previously installed. We got a previously installed crack. There, get this up here. Now, this is the toughest part of the whole job, trying to get these injector clips off without breaking them. This clip is already busted, so that's gonna slide up. And again, right here, these little red locks, they're so bad. Slide them up, push, pull. There we go. Nice and easy. This one's busted. This one is good. I do believe they sell these things online. Maybe we could do a video where we replace them one day. And if you have a 99 and newer, yep, look, this one just gave it up, busted. 99 and newer should have these, and 97, or sorry, 98 and below should have the fat injectors with different plugs. But we'll get this up out of the way, nice and loose. Now we can disconnect our fuel rail. All right, we'll start with these. These are 10 millimeter. Actually, the 10 millimeter is gonna be your best friend. So we're gonna gently reverse this out. There we go. These 10 millimeters have the flange that doesn't spin. Take this bracket off too. That's gonna be in the way. One down here. Don't go too crazy with the impact. Remember, this is steel fasteners and aluminum. Do not want to strip it. Very positive. And here are these guys. These are nuts that are on this bracket. Then your O2 sensor bracket comes off as well. It slides right up. Now you can access the other fastener with the elongated stud. Same thing for this guy. Now if you want to guys, you could label your injectors one through four, but they have memory. So they're gonna go right back to where they need to go. Uh, I don't think you'll have a problem with it. All right, we ran this sucker dry, so there shouldn't be much fuel in this fuel rail, but if there is, we're just gonna try to empty as much as we can out of this little valve. Got a little jar in there to catch. There, spits a little bit. That's about it, very nice. All right, we got our disconnect tool set. Gonna pop off this lock right here. Come on, baby. There we go. This fuel rail's not too bad. Maybe a coat of paint could have saved it, but uh, we're gonna replace it. Actually, we're going with this guy. So what you wanna do is you wanna push the decoupler tool as far into the fuel line as possible. This will release the little clips inside of it. Sometimes you gotta use a tool to get better leverage and it helps if you push the line into the rail, it'll make sure the decoupler tool goes farther into the line. Once the tool engages the clips in all the way, then you can slide the line out of the rail. The only problem is, after 20 years, they kind of get stuck together. Huh, jeez. <laughs> that just pushed the whole fuel rail out. That was easy. And there's the fuel line. All right, well. If 
Fuel rail is out. Make sure you save your tool. All right, check out these injectors. O-rings are flat and square. They're hard. They should be nice and juicy and soft and round like a donut. So we want juicy O-rings, not hard, solid, square ones. And you may also find disgusting cracks. So prime example of why you're gonna change these injectors. Also, you will see these have one port and we're gonna replace them with the four port. So this is gotta go. These are the 99 to 01 style injectors. And these are the 98 and older injectors. Have them on hand just to show you guys the difference. Ooh, this is a nice juicy O-ring, much better. But we won't be using either of those. We're gonna use these guys. Beautiful. Check it out. I'll leave a link to these, these nice four hole injectors. I'll also leave you a link if you need the shorter, fatter style injectors. There we go, nice four port, beautiful. All right, check out these clips. These clips hold the injector onto the rail. What you're gonna do is pry them off gently. Uh, make sure you keep a hand there because they will fly off and shoot like 50 feet into the air. You'll never see them again if they're not done carefully. So, trying to make sure I got a good grip on it and boink, popped right off. And I lost it anyway. Got my six clips. And if you're gonna reuse your rail, I highly suggest, I highly recommend, and I implore you to clean off the rust and paint it. It will look much better. And it will prevent further rot, especially in this area. This tube always breaks off. And these injectors, they're held in with more O-rings. So I'll gently spin those out and yeah. That's how you take them out. Ooh, that one's that one's real tight. The ends usually have rust, so careful. Just gonna wanna wiggle them out. They will come. Sometimes you pull out the injectors and the O-ring still remains inside. Make sure you pull out the old O-ring before you put the new injectors in. You don't wanna double them up. All right, so this fuel rail is Aloe Works. It came from Amazon. About a hundred bucks or so, give or take. I don't remember off the top of my head. But as you can see, there's some assembly required. This is just a hollow fuel rail. Nice aluminum. And it comes with four brackets, eight screws to mount it, and two end caps with little washers, little O-rings. We are going to attach these. I think this is the way it goes in. These go on with a 530 seconds Allen. And I highly recommend a dab of Loctite. And there you go. They just thread in just like that. It's that simple. I really hope they go this way and not uh, this way. I think this way would push the fuel injectors a little too farther away. Yeah, we're going to stick with this. <laughs> Hopefully I'm right. All as I know is that these are in the right way because I got an indent here. So at least I'm putting the screws in the right side of the bracket. All right, now for the end caps. I'm gonna make sure we have our O-ring on there. Don't lose the O-ring. You do not want a fuel leak. And a little dab of Loctite as well. And this guy is, oh, we got a 10 millimeter here. want to make sure that nothing fell in your tube before you go ahead and tighten it up. So just give it a little shake, make sure no bugs snuck in there. And then we'll go ahead and put the O-ring on. And then our last dab of Loctite. And tighten her on. All right, this side should fit into our factory uh, fuel line, but it comes with an adapter in case it doesn't. So we'll just hold on to that. Now we get to put in our injectors. Yay. Gonna wanna make sure the plug side is up. 
so it's going to be like this okay just like that now whenever you're dealing with fuel you could use vaseline as a lubricant it's petroleum based so it shouldn't hurt it's going to go ahead and lube this up and slide her in there we go just like that repeat five more times there we have it guys a nice new fuel rail with four port injectors this is going to be beautiful oddly enough there's no use for this clip anymore huh. and for the record guys if you're reusing an old fuel rail it's very important to make sure that you clean this hole out really good you want to make sure that fuel injector slides in nicely and that o-ring doesn't get pinched or ripped or busted when you try to put it back in the factory rail it could get tight so just make sure it's clean and lubed all right once you throw some vaseline on the other side of the injectors you could go ahead and reinstall this is a epic moment i'm just gonna fish the last two injectors over this wire just to make sure it's in the proper location and then i'm gonna line it up with all the holes It's just gonna rest itself in place. Look at that. Now once you're sure this is free of any obstructions, and everything's lined up nicely, just go ahead and give it a nice even push. <laughs> just like that, the rail is in. Let me connect the fuel line before I forget. That clips right on, then the safety lock. Tip goes in first, and then the back. We get thread on our cap now before we lose it. Same threads goes right on. Gonna go ahead and plug in our connectors nice and easy so they don't break. We could reinstall our factory 10 millimeter hardware. Nice and easy guys, remember you're threading this into aluminum. Don't crank too hard. We'll go ahead and put a dab of anti-seize on these longer studs. Many times the 10 millimeter will seize onto these threads and you'll have the whole bracket spinning around like crazy. You might need a vice grip to, uh, to get them off. But anyway, so to avoid using a vice grip in the future, we we'll use anti-seize now. Plug back your temp sensor, reroute your O2 sensor, plug it back in. Speaking of O2 sensors, I need an O2 sensor video. I believe my upstream O2 sensor is drunk. <laughs> Refer back to other O2 sensor videos. Let's get this cable cradle on. There we go, that'll do it. Push down our wire loom. Now we can reattach our cables. We'll reconnect these vacuum lines once again. CCV lines, not PCV. This one over here. I'm gonna reconnect our fuel pump relay. Now we can send our battery cables back to their home. Excellent. Let's try it out. All right, here we go. Gonna start the toad. Check out this keychain. <laughs> I got a toad. All right. 
Now we're going to prime the fuel pump a little bit. Oh, that's on. Prime. Prime. Now don't be afraid if it sputters for a while. There's air in the fuel system. So here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Toad fired up right away. That's awesome. I thought it might have sputtered a little bit. Check that out, guys. There we go, guys. That is a fine fuel rail project. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna close this one out right in front of the nice purring 4.0. And check out the link and the description to all the parts and products I use. The fuel rail I got, I got the crimson red version. It also comes in blue and black, I believe. So check out those links. And uh, yeah, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching this. I really enjoyed filming it and getting this towed one step ahead of all the other toads. I don't know. But all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed again. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.